and welcome to the 100 Acre Wool Knitting Podcast. My name is Bella and I am a knitter based in Northern California in the US. I am a knitwear designer and lover of all things knitting and all things spinning and fiber arts. Um, it's been a little while, if you're not new around here, it's been a little while since I posted my last podcast. Things with life got a little crazy, you know how it gets sometimes. Work got really busy, we had um, lots of new things happening around here, and um, we had a family emergency. Unfortunately, um, everything is looking good now, but yeah, we had to go down to LA for a little while and help out. Um, thankfully, everything is looking up and looking better now, but yeah, just got a little crazy and I just wasn't really in the mind space to podcast. But we're back and I'm so happy to be sharing with you what I've been working on for the past couple weeks here with you now. Um, I have also been working on some new design ideas, so those will be coming down the pike. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's get into what I have to share with you for today. Um, I have some finished objects, lots of knitting, a little bit of spinning. Um, yeah, some finished objects and works in progress, and I think a couple things that you haven't seen yet, maybe. Um, yeah, and then some acquisitions at the end if you would like to stick around for that. As always, I link timestamps in the description below this video if you would like to skip to something or rewatch a particular section. And then I also always include links to everything that I discuss, so that is yarn or podcast. Podcasts. Sometimes I talk about podcasts, um, but yarn or projects that I discuss or patterns, anything like that, all of those will be linked in the description below this video. So yeah, with that, let's first get into some finished objects. Um, first, actually, I guess I'll talk about what I'm wearing, which it sort of coordinates with one of the other finished objects. So what I'm wearing on my neck today this is my newly finished and newly published cowl design. This is the Wayworth cowl, and I am just so happy with how this pattern came out. All of the testers had a blast with this, and they created such gorgeous versions, and I, I, I'm, just, I'm just so happy with how it came out. It's so comfortable and a great spring accessory. I've been wearing this non-stop recently because it's in that season where you're still kind of chilly and especially with the wind chill in the spring. I don't know about you where you are but we get a lot of wind and it can get pretty chilly so it's really great when I'm on my walks to um, have a little cowl to put around my neck and not have to mess around with a big shawl necessarily. Um, yeah so I really love how this one came out. So this is my version and then I also have another version to share with you in a second. Um, that I knit for a friend. I'm also wearing my Kusli sweater. This is the most comfy sweater that I own, that I have created so far. Um, I just, oh my gosh, this is, Kusli means cozy pretty much, and it is definitely cozy. So <laughs> that is what I'm wearing today. Um, and both of these patterns are on my Etsy shop if you would like to check them out. Also linked in the description below this video. So first finished object. As I said, I knit another Wayworth cowl for my friend, and this is it. I had actually already given this to my friend, and then I realized I hadn't shown it to you guys. I, haven't, I hadn't shared it with you all yet. Um, so luckily, she lives very close to me. So Shannon, if you're watching, hi. Thank you for letting me steal this back from you <laughs> um, briefly to share with you all. But yes, yeah, so this is another version of the Wayworth cowl. For this one, I used some hand spun yarn as the sort of contrast color in these diamonds, and then I used one of my own hand dyed, um, naturally hand dyed yarns for the main color. And this cowl, so the one that I'm wearing here, um, this one I used a Nutiden yarn held single. This one I used sport weight yarns, so each of these came out to be about a sport weight yarn, um, also held single. and. Wow, it used a lot less yarn than I was expecting. It used well under 100 grams of each color. I think I have the balls with me. So this is what is left over. Each of these were 100 grams. Um, so the pink was a hand spun that I had done with fiber from Wolfiend, um, an Etsy shop 
Can you see that? Oh my gosh. I just totally fell in love with this fiber and so did my friend Shannon. We love it so much. It's just really beautiful shifts of pinks and peaches and things like that. So really beautiful fiber. If you have not checked out Wolfiend and you're a spinner, I would highly recommend. This one I think was a Coriadale and it was just a lovely spin. I highly recommend this. Um, but yes, and then for the contrast color, this was my hand dyed yarn, just a really simple beige, pretty much there, kind of a warm beige. Um, yeah, so used in total 100 grams. <laughs> so probably about 50 grams, maybe a little over 50 grams of each color. So really does not use much yarn at all. And it did go pretty quickly with the knitting. This one I took a little bit longer because honestly I was just having so much fun seeing the colors and I didn't want it to end, <laughs> but um, could have gone a little bit faster. But yeah, I just really loved knitting on this one and the color shift is just so much fun. Here is what the back looks like and I just think it's so much fun how the colors lined up. It was just sort of serendipity how <laughs> the, the fading sort of lines up here in the back seam. Um, so this one is entirely mosaic knitting. This pattern is entirely knit with mosaic knitting, so it is two color. It is sort of color worky, but it's actually only using one color at a time when you're actually knitting it. So color management and, you know, not getting your yarns crossed and tangled is a lot easier with this. Um, with mosaic knitting technique if you haven't done that before. Um, if you want to try color work knitting and you haven't yet, um, I would definitely recommend mosaic knitting first um, to kind of ease your way into it. Because in my opinion, it is a lot simpler <laughs> than um, normal color work knitting when you have to deal with multiple strands of yarn at a time, that sort of thing. And this is what it looks like on the inside. I just think it looks so interesting. That could even be its own stitch pattern, right? Doesn't that look really cool? So yeah, really quick. And I think it just looks so cool with the fading colors. Um, you could use a hand spun or something like a spin cycle yarn. I just think it's so cute. So yeah, and then it is kind of tall for a cowl. Um, I designed it that way because I wanted it to be able to be pulled up over your nose and keep the warmth in. <laughs> I was on my bike one day and I was thinking, oh my gosh, my face is freezing. Because when you're on a bike, if it's already windy and then you're on a bike riding, it's there's even more wind and it just gets really chilly really quickly, at least for me. So I really wanted a cowl that I could do this and it would be super cozy and comfortable. But then you can also fold it up and fold it down so that it is not in your face all the time. So it's definitely multi-use in that way. Um, yeah, so I think that's all I have to say about this one. I really had a lot of fun with it. So if you're looking for a simple, quick little project for the springtime, then I would definitely recommend this one. Um, yeah, so that will also be linked in the description below this video. And then another finished object is actually another new design that I had been working on. I cast on a little toque beret sort of an idea. Um, I didn't have an exact plan in mind. I just knew I wanted some sort of a hat using brioche because I wanted to practice and play with brioche, simple brioche. Um, but yeah, so this is how it turned out. <laughs> it is actually quite a bit smaller than I was anticipating, um, than I was wanting it to be. I think I need to knit it a little bit bigger. It is definitely cute and definitely its own sort of thing. Um, I think I was going for more of a beret sort of style, so looser, bigger, flouncier sort of a look, but I ended up with sort of a little, it looks like a Scottish toque to me, <laughs> which I think is totally cute and, you know, definitely something um, to wear and to want to have in your wardrobe. But yes, I was going for something a little bit different, but I am going to be including this version um, of it in a pattern as well as a larger version. So this will be kind of a toque beret sort of a deal. I haven't started on the other version that I'm thinking of that will be larger, more voluminous and big. Um, 
But yeah, so that will kind of be a two-parter pattern. A two-in-one, if you will. <laughs> um, and then I also made this adorable little pom-pom using the same yarn that I used for knitting the actual beret, or toque, whatever you would like to call it. And I just absolutely love how it came out. This was the first pom-pom that I've ever made. And I used one of those little contraptions. I will insert a picture here or a video um, because I don't have it right in front of me right now. But I think it was from Clover. I'm sure tons of people have this, have have owned um, have owned this little contraption to create pom-poms, but they have a lot of different sizes of the pom-poms, the size of pom-poms that, that you can create. And it's just so easy. You just follow the directions and it actually comes out well. Um, I was very happy with that, that it actually came out looking very poofy and voluminous because I was scared it would be kind of sad. I feel like sometimes pom-poms can come out a little sad. But yeah, so that was a really fun little project. Um, didn't need to take me as long as it did. Again, with everything going on, I was just not in the mind space a lot to be knitting and and all that, but so yeah, it took me a little bit longer than it normally would, but I just think it came out so cute and it is very cute and comfortable. Um, that again used very little yarn. So I had had this yarn in my stash. This is from Hudson and West, I believe. I always keep my little yarn tags in the middle of the cake so that I know what it is. Yes, Hudson and West, and which one is this? This is their Dusk colorway, and so it's their Merino Corydale Weld Base in their Dusk colorway. Really lovely yarn. I really loved working with this. It's just really high quality wool, nice and soft, but is definitely still very natural feeling, um, but not scratchy, also not super washed, so really loved that yarn. This is a 50 gram skein when it comes to you. I had already used some for a different project, and then I cast this on, and I still have this much left, which I haven't measured, I haven't weighed how much this is, maybe it's like 15 or 20 grams, but, um, yeah, it really didn't use much to create this hat and the pom-pom. So that was pretty great. And then I held that yarn throughout with this Surrey Alpaca. I just absolutely loved this colorway. This is from Little Fox Yarns. And I'm not remembering the colorway right now, but if I remember it, <laughs> if I find it, I will also put that below. Um, yeah, I totally love this colorway. This is steals my heart. <laughs> um, yeah, so I used two strands of the Surrey held with one strand of, I believe that's a DK weight yarn, the Weld from Hudson and West. So it's a very, very squishy fabric. Um, probably overall it's like an Aran or even thicker weight. But again, since it is not covering too much of your head, it doesn't add too much warmth at this point in the season. Um, I actually think, again, I, I would like it to be a little bit bigger and even be warmer. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that will be something new coming at some point <laughs> when I finish the other version of it. And of course, I will share that with you here. Um, okay, so that is it for finished objects. Now let's get into works in progress. And this one I'm so excited to share with you. This one, if you are not new around here, you know this has been in the works for a while. And here it is. <laughs> so this is a sweater that I am knitting for my partner. This is the Unbearable Sweater by Le Garçon, Max the Knitter. Um, it's adorable, right? <laughs> I love the little teddy bears. How cute is that? So this is a color work design, um, knit in the round, top down. So I am actually almost to the end of the color work motif. Um, we are actually changing the bottom portion. So in the original design, Max put these cute little flowers right underneath the bears all the way around. Um, but my partner wanted more of a leaf slash tree design there. Um, thought it would go better with his vibe and also these colors, because these colors that we chose are very, very natural. Um, two of these are actually my own hand spun 
So again, right, why this project has been taking a while, I had to spin the yarn first. So this green here at the top is an Onrock Air Fiber, I think from last year that I spun up to be a two-ply DK weight yarn, as well as the beige here and here. Um, that was also an Onrock Air Fiber that I spun up to be a DK weight yarn. And the green fiber I had spun up first, and that, I am still a pretty new spinner. Uh, that one I was spinning, so it was a very fluffy fiber, um, carded and not combed, so it had a lot of air in it, and I was spinning it to be a worsted weight yarn, so it didn't actually come out as well as I think it could have. Um, but then I learned some more. <laughs> By the time I got through to the beige fiber, when I was spinning that up, I have learned some more and um, utilized some more woolen spun spinning techniques for that one, and this yarn came out a lot nicer. I think they knit up perfectly well, and you can't really tell from just looking at it, and probably, you know, when, when he's wearing it, you won't really be able to tell the difference, but um, definitely touching the yarn just in the cake, you can absolutely tell, and when you're knitting with it, the beige turned out a lot loftier and softer and just more malleable, and then the green is just a little bit more ropey. But again, I think once they're knit up, they're just... They just work so well together and I really love the colors together so um, yeah those are those and then the black yarn here for the teddy bears I used some yarn that I had purchased from our local yarn shop which is a verb for keeping warm and it is a daughter of a shepherd yarn it was a limited edition British wool yarn and I only have the tag for this gray color which will be this this color will be used for like the rest of the garment. Um, the teddy bears was a black, a black wool, but I think they're probably the same makeup. Um, Hibberdian and Zwartbulls and Blueface. The gray is a DK weight yarn, but the black was a fingering weight yarn, so I'm holding a double, which I think is actually working out really well because since this is stranded color work and I'm having a white beige, I'm having a beige go behind the teddy bears. Um, the white behind the black, that's a lot of contrast, and you could be seeing the white through the black. So I think since the black is thicker, a little bit, a little bit thicker since I'm holding a double, um, since the black is a bit thicker, I think it's definitely helping the beige not show through as much. I did um, twist my yarns. What is that called? <laughs> is that called twisting your yarns? Every so, every couple of stitches, because there are some long, um, long spaces between color changes. So I did wrap my stitches. Is that what it's called? Anyway, um, I did <laughs> wrap my yarns um, in between here. So there are some points sometimes that you can see a little bit of beige, but I think once I block this out, it'll be, it'll be okay. But yeah, so now I am at the point where I'm working on the bottom little leaves, and I will try to show you here. You can't really see much of it at this point, but I just tossed up a little, um, I just pulled together a little chart <laughs> for how we want that to look. Um, so I'm working through that now, and of course I will show you all. Oh yes, of course, you probably want to see the inside as well. How fun is that? I always love circular yokes. Like, look at this. <laughs> Isn't that so much fun to look at? Um, yeah, so I did steam block this just so I could show you all because it was very, very squished on the needles. But yeah, that's how it's coming out so far. It looks like it's gonna fit him really well so far. And yeah, I think that's about all I have to share with you on that for now. There will be a hood added, I think, at the end, or almost at the end. Um, so I have a provisional cast on up here right now. If you think it looks a little weird, that's because that is not the finished <laughs> edge there. So there will also be a hoodie aspect. Um, yeah, so I just love how that's coming out, and I really love how all the colors are working together, and I've already told my partner, I'm saying, you know, I'm going to be stealing that from you sometimes <laughs> and wearing it. He's like, okay. So, <laughs> loving that project. And another work in progress that I have going is another new design. 
Um, I have been working on a spring sweater, springtime sweater, and again using Newted End yarn. If you're not new around here, you know how much I love Newted End yarn. Um, you might have seen this in the last podcast episode, but I have come quite a ways with this one. So it doesn't have a name yet, but it is going to be a very springy inspired sweater, summery kind of colors and, and vibes with this one. So it is worked bottom up, um, flat, and then the sleeves will be done in the round. But so far I have finished the entire back portion of this. So it's a really simple kind of sweet cable motif. And then I've also done one of the full front panels and I have them just clipped right now at the top. Um, I do this a lot with my knitting where I'm going to be having a seam or a three needle bind off or anything like that just to keep things more organized and just so I know where exactly I'm going to be attaching things. I also used that technique when doing the Wayworth cowl um, because there is one seam in the back. Um, so this one, when I do the seaming, I clip along the entire edge while I'm seaming it and then I just unclip as I go so that I make sure that the seam is lined up perfectly so that I don't get to the end and there's like like it's not going to match up. So I would definitely recommend that for your knitting if you have these sorts of like these are actually quilting clips. If you have any sort of thing like this or just maybe like a thicker sewing needle if you have that like pins. Um, would definitely recommend that for keeping things organized and tidy and making sure that everything will line up. So anywho, um, yeah, so working this bottom up and I'm just so excited for this one already. Um, I designed it to be a little bit of a drop shoulder, but I think it's actually turning out more like a set in sleeve, which I am definitely happy with, but we will see how it blocks out. I'm not sure exactly how slouchy it will get, but I'm really excited about that. And then there will be a three needle bind off in the top. I will be picking up stitches and knitting the sleeves top down and then picking up the neckline along the entire edge and there will be buttons down the center and I'm really excited for those. I still need to figure out what buttons I'm going to use. I might use some that I have in my stash already or I might need to find some. So that will be very fun. I always love looking for buttons. <laughs> That's like one of the things that when I'm knitting a cardigan I'm like oh I'm so excited because I also get to pick up buttons. <laughs> I just think it adds something extra. So I'll show you the fabric up close and it's just a very, very subtle cable technique. Very simple to do, really, really pretty simple stitch technique. Even if you haven't done cables before, there's only one type of cable cross um, and not even every cross is a cable, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so anyways, that is how this one is coming and for this particular sample, I am using two colors of Newted and Yarn held together. So where is my ball of yarn? So this is what my ball of yarn looks like. It is two colors from their February collection of this year, I believe. I think it's Mogan and the pinky one. It's the two pinky ones, if you know what I'm talking about. Again, I will put the color names down below if you are curious or interested, but I just, you know, I absolutely love New to Den yarn and I think in this cable motif is just going to be the squishiest, most lovely fabric. Just so excited with how it's going to come out. And I did already block this, of course, before I started and the cables block out much wider and it just, it's going to be so pretty, I think. Very simple and elegant. So I'm very excited with how that one's coming along and that pattern I'm going to try to get out um, to testing as soon as possible because I do think it will be really great for the spring summer time. And another work in progress, oh my goodness, this work in progress <laughs> has been a work in progress, probably the longest of anything that I've ever had going for a very long time. Um, <laughs> I think I talked about this project last in maybe like episode four of this podcast. So 
so it's been a little while <laughs> and I just never finished them because I had ran I had run out of one of the colorways of yarn does this look familiar if you're a longtime viewer <laughs> so these are my underwing mitts oh my gosh brings back memories of this this little one um, so these are my underwing mittens that I just never finished because I was going to run out of this black yarn here for the main color and I didn't want to start on the mittens when I knew I was going to run out and I wanted to make sure that I could get the yarn again and make sure that the colors were going to match before I even started the next one. So I did in a yarn order that I actually made months ago, <laughs> I did end up finding a another skein of the black yarn which is a Jameson and Smith wool um, it is their two ply their regular two ply I'm not sure exactly the name of it two ply jumper weight um, and then this color is their 81 charcoal so it's a black with tiny little gray specks throughout um, another woolen spun yarn and yeah I'm very glad I got that one because I am almost done with this skein of the original black and I was definitely going to run out before the end um, but I will say their lots are very consistent I purchased these years apart they are definitely not the same lot number and I cannot tell one difference in the color of the yarn maybe because it's black with a little bit of gray like that's a pretty simple mix I would think um, but seriously like no difference whatsoever so if you're ever needing some more Jameson and Smith <laughs> for a project that you that you've had going for years um, you know could be a good bet that they will match <laughs> at least for the charcoal color so anyways I've gotten started on the second mitten and or mitt however you want to call it because there are no they're fingerless mittens mitts <laughs> um, but yes, so here is how the second one is going. It's knit bottom up, and I just think they're so cute. I didn't want these languishing in my stash forever, um, languishing in my whip stash forever, and I wanted to be able to actually wear them in the springtime. So here's how this one is coming out, and this was really quick. This is a very, very quick project, but I am taking longer in on it than I need to because I have so many other things going. Um, this I actually knit on our um, car rides to and from LA in the past weeks. So um, just a couple of hours spent on all of this. And it's really small knitting. It is, what is this? US size one needles, 2.25 millimeter needles. So a very, very fine gauge, but that definitely creates a warm and toasty fabric and just so much detail with what you can make with that. I just love the high definition of detail. So beautiful. Um, I forget the de designer's name of this, but she does amazing work. If you really love this sort of illustrative sort of design, she does a lot of things like this. So would definitely recommend this pattern. It's really simple if you've done color work before, or even if you haven't. It's a pretty simple color work motif in my opinion, so I would definitely recommend this pattern and this yarn as well. I've talked about Jameson and Smith on this podcast before. Um, it's one of the yarns that I used in my yellow cardigan, and I absolutely love it. It's a really, really great staple yarn that I think will last forever. So yeah, that is how that project is going. Hopefully we'll be done with it very soon. And then, Another work in progress that has been going for a little while is a sweater that I'm knitting for my friend. <laughs> it just looks like a big blue mass now. Um, this is a big drop shoulder sweater that I'm knitting for one of my friends. He wanted a sweater that looked very similar to a sweater that was in the first Knives Out movie. So it's basically a mainly blue sweater with some red and white marling throughout. So that is what I am knitting here. Um, the main color is a new today yarn. What is the colorway? Nina. And then the other two colors is a lace weight Jameson and Smith in just this really bright red. 
um, actually almost fuchsia, and then just a simple lace weight white color that I'm holding throughout. Oh, and the Nita I'm holding double. So it's a very, very thick fabric. And this is also one by one ribbing. So a really simple stitch, but it's really, really dense and really thick. I do have it at a relatively tight gauge. Um, let's see, what am I using here? US size eight needles, five millimeter needles. So yeah, I think once I block it out though, and the ribbing stretches out, I don't think it'll be too dense. I can definitely see light through this fabric, so I'm hoping it won't be too hot for him to wear. I have found that New to Den yarn in particular is very breathable, so it will keep you warm, but it won't keep you too warm. Um, so I'm hoping that in our Northern California weather, it won't be too warm. Although we are going into the summer, so by the time I finish this, he may only get to wear it in the night times, if that. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, things take a long time to knit, especially sweaters. And I am definitely taking my time on this one. Because it's really, I'm leaving it for the times when I want something very simple and mindless to work on, since it is just one by one ribbing. But I do think I should work on it faster so I can get it to him sooner. But anywho, so that's another pro project that I'm working on for a friend. Um, so yes, this is bottom up. My next step, I'm almost to the underarm point where I will be splitting from working in the round. I will be splitting to um, split the fronts and the backs and create the armholes working bottom up still. And then it will be a drop shoulder. Um, so then I'll be picking up stitches on the sleeve holes and then working down from there. So there is still quite a ways to go, but I don't know. I feel that at least for me, once I get through to the end of the body on sweaters, the arms always fly, or sleeves rather, sorry. <laughs> the sleeves always fly because I'm just, I can see the finish line and it's just very exciting. So, um, Yes, I think there will be a point where the sweater will come to and I'll just go very fast. Um, okay, so I think that's all the knitting works in progress. And then I have done a little bit of spinning. So, um, if you have seen some of my last podcasts, you may have heard me talk about that I'm going to be making an entirely hand-spun sweater for a friend. Um, it will be a shifty sweater, which will have six different colorways in it, I believe, is the plan. Um, so I have all the colorways now. It took me a little while to wrangle together all of the different fibers that she wanted, but we finally have them all, and I have started spinning them up. So this is the first colorway that I have started spinning, and it's going to be all two-ply yarns, because I did want to create a similar look to the original spin cycle um, version of the sweater. The original Shifty uses Dyed in the Wool by Spin Cycle Yarns, um, which is a two-ply yarn. I am using all non-superwash fibers. Um, so this is the first one that I have spun up, and I just absolutely adore the colors. I really love these sort of electric, like, blues and purples, and I don't really ever wear these colors, but, oops, drop the fiber. I don't ever really wear these colors, but I just love looking at them. I just think that there's so much fun, so much vibrancy there. Um, this one in particular, this is a Malabrigo fiber. Um, I think it's called Malabrigo Nube. Pardon the crinkle. One second. And um, so this is the fiber in fiber form. So I've spun half of it so far. This was a 100 gram braid. Oh my gosh, just look at this, these colors. They're just so beautiful. I love how Malabrigo just puts in like a million colors <laughs> into, it seems like, all of their colorways. They always have a bunch of colors going. So really, really beautiful colors um, all together, playing with each other. Even the single, just so much life. But I will say, when I was spinning with it, and I did hear about this before from other spinners that I've 
um, seen on YouTube and Instagram and such that Malabrigo Nube in particular is a little bit felted once you're trying to work with it, once you're trying to draft it and spin it, which I did experience. My um, fingers, my hands were definitely getting cramped when I was drafting it, especially since I was trying to do worsted spun and really smooth out all the fiber strands while I was drafting it. Um, I was definitely getting some strain on my fingers, but I don't know. It was definitely workable. I just took more breaks <laughs> than I maybe would have otherwise. Um, and then another thing is these colors are really, be really, really beautiful. But on the inside of the fiber braid, there were some points where it was lighter. So actually right here, you can kind of tell. Um, if I pull this apart, you can see it's lighter on the inside. Can you tell? It's lighter on the inside than the outside. And I think when they're dyeing it, maybe the full saturation of all the depth of color doesn't make it all the way through. So just be aware of that when you're spinning it, that it won't be exactly the depth of color that you see on the outside because it will mix with the lighter colors on the inside and it will just give you an overall lighter sort of spin. So yeah, I love it though. I think it's so beautiful and definitely worth trying it if you find a Malabrigo Nube color that you want, that, that you like. Um, yeah, so I will be spinning up the single for this one and getting to all the other colors. Um, some of the other colorways are from Neighborhood Fiber Co. and I think some indie shops that I purchased from, I believe. But yeah, so that will be another long-term project, but very excited about it. I really love spinning. It's just such a great simple pastime, really relaxing, sometimes even more relaxing than knitting, I think. Yeah, if you haven't tried spinning, I will always recommend it. And they have e-spinners now, so, or not now. <laughs> um, if you want to try spinning and you don't want to invest in a whole wheel, they also have e-spinners, which are possibly easier as well, because you only have to do the finger drafting part. You don't have to worry about the pedaling. Um, Anywho, definitely would recommend spinning to you if you haven't tried it yet, but that's a whole other rabbit hole that you would dive down and <laughs> more things to get obsessed with, right? Okay, so next is acquisitions. Um, if you would like to stick around and see, I just have a couple. If not, then thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Um, but I do have some acquisitions. So since I haven't podcast in about a billion years, <laughs> um, I did go to um, Stitches West a couple months ago. I think it was early March, so last month. Um, made my way up to Sacramento and went to Stitches West and met some lovely knitters up there, um, hung out for the day, and that was really fun. It was really fun to go to that. It was just, it felt more like we're getting back to normalcy. Um, we were wearing masks, so there, there was still that, but just the fact that we have knitting festivals going on again is just really happy. This was the first knitting event that I have been to since the pandemic, so that was really fun. Um, and if you're in the area, I would definitely recommend it next year. Um, yeah, so I did pick up some yarns. Um, my favorite booth that I saw was this booth Happy Hounds Alpaca Ranch. So it's 100% USA alpacas and yarn. And they had so many beautiful shades of alpaca yarn. I wish I had taken video. I didn't. I forgot to bring my camera. But um, they just had so many different shades of natural alpaca colors. And, you know, mixing the different alpaca fibers in different quantities to create all these different shades. I wish I could have purchased like one of everything and just done like a really cool low contrast sort of color work deal, but didn't do that. I ended up getting some yarn to maybe create a blankety sort of a shawl or scarf because I really want these to be either around my head or close to my head or neck because they are just so soft. I am a sucker for alpaca and I know I can't really 
I wouldn't want to make a sweater out of it because it isn't as elastic. It might stretch out over time um, and kind of, you know, stretch out and adjust measurements where you may not want them to in a sweater, but in a shawl or a scarf or anything like that, I wouldn't mind. Um, also wouldn't want to make socks with these because they just feel so delicate and sweet and I wouldn't want to mess them up at all. So these, these will probably turn into a scarf or something like that, but I'm thinking with these colors, maybe like a low contrast color work sort of thing. Um, yeah, I, I think I saw a sample at the table with these colors exactly, and they just went so well together, just a beautiful, natural sort of look to them when they're mixed together in a color work. So um, I would definitely recommend checking out their website because like I said they have so many different versions and concoctions of different things together. But yes, so this sort of beige color here is 100% baby alpaca yarn. The colorway is oatmeal heather and this is a DK weight three, pot, three ply yarn. 200 yards, so this is perhaps 50 grams. I didn't actually weigh them and they don't say on the label, but it's probably about 50 grams per skein. And then this guy is their natural beige, again 100% baby alpaca yarn, and this is also DK weight yarn. So really, really beautiful. Oh my gosh. Just so soft and so lovely and so sweet. I think these would make a beautiful baby knit related item if you want to splurge on that and have something just so lovely and soft um, would take some care, but just so soft. I'm a sucker for soft things. <laughs> um, and then this one I just picked up because I just totally loved the colorway. Um, only picked up one skein, so I'll have to knit something small, but this is their natural black and white blend, slate gray number three, and again, a DK weight yarn, three ply. So this one, I feel, is even softer than the other colorways somehow, and just, I love the heather of the gray. Totally fell in love with these yarns, and I haven't had a chance to knit with them yet, but I will certainly update you here once I do, and oh my gosh, I'm just so excited to see how those come out. The other acquisition that I have is too big to hold up and show you, so I will insert some footage here of what it is. Um, I purchased a new skein winder, skein swift, I think that's what those are called. Um, so I purchased a new swift, and the reason I got this one in particular is because it has a yard counter. So I actually really bought this for my hand spun so that I could keep track of how many yards I'm making with my hand spun. Um, I have been using a Nitty Naughty to wind off my skeins of yarn um, once I finish the spin. I've always been making two ply yarns, so once I finish the two ply yarn, I wind it off on the Nitty Naughty, and then I will soak it um, before I turn it into a skein. And I could count the strands. My Nitty Naughty is like a set height, so that once you, you know, do the four corner wind, um, it will make a yard. So I could count the amount of, you know, passes that it makes around the Nitty Naughty, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't, I don't have enough time for that, so <laughs> um, I don't do that, but I am always curious to know how much yardage I have, and I think that would also help me with understanding grist. I do want to learn more about grist in my yarn, and yeah, I just think it would be really good to have those stats on the yarn that I create, and how much yardage I actually got out of, how many grams, and, and so on and so forth. So I purchased this Swift to count the yards for me. It's a really cool mechanism that you hand wind it and every single pass you can set the dowels to be different distances and it says on the Swift itself like how long of a circumference you're making. So whether you want a yard or a yard and a half or so on, um, you can set the dowels and then every pass it will count one yard for you. So by the end, you just read a number and you know exactly how long your, you know, skein was. So I just thought that was worth it for me. It's also very beautiful and I could use it for, um, actually I have been using it to wind off, you know, regular skeins of yarn, um, not my own hand spun. So it's just my new Swift now. And I just thought it was a really great little 
birthday gift to myself. So, <laughs> and this Swift is from a local woodworker. I will have them linked down below. Definitely make sure to check out their stuff. They create really beautiful, high quality um, pieces and they have really great customer service as well. So yeah, um, really great finds at the Yarn Festival Stitches West. And I think that is everything I have to share with you today. Um, thank you so much for watching and it's so good to be back. <laughs> I am just really happy to be sharing with you again and, you know, continuing this community here on YouTube. Um, so thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed or learned something and I'll see you in the next one. Um, make sure to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Happy knitting, happy making. Bye.